Hello everybody, welcome back to part two. I am gonna do um, the normal to pastel goth version. Um, I did the normal to goth, which should be up before this one. Um, so we're gonna do the part two. Since I have the wig, if I don't do it now, I probably, it'll probably be another year. So that's what we're gonna do. If that sounds interesting, definitely stick around if you wanna see how I go from this to pastel goth. And yeah, I think that's all I have. Make sure you're subscribed and we're gonna get started. Okay, so I did moisturize. I'm gonna go in with my Wander Beauty Glow Ahead Illuminating Face Oil because I ran out of my, was it Touch and Soul Prime Essence? I have some in my Ulta cart with some other stuff. I'm just deciding if I'm gonna get it now or I'm gonna wait because I really do like that stuff. I like the way it um, makes my skin feel. I, it feels a little more hydrating. I figured with the pastel goth, it wouldn't matter if I was glowy. Maybe it does. I don't know. If I was going to be pastel goth, I would be glowy. So I think if I was goth, it would be a little more glowy than that. But so in that video, if you haven't seen it yet, um, I didn't do with like a super costumey, like I did, you know, if I was going to be goth and like completely go for it, that's how I would do my makeup. So I didn't do it. It was a pretty wearable look other than the foundation being lighter than I would normally do. It's morning for me when I'm filming this, so I'm gonna drink coffee while we're doing this. If that, hopefully that doesn't bother anybody. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be the same kind of thing. It's gonna be a wearable look. You forgetting that I'm gonna put foundation on my whole face. When I go to work, I have to wear a mask at both the hair salon and AutoZone, so I don't put foundation past like this far. So it's when I film videos like this, it's like, oh yeah, you can bring that all the way down because I'm gonna have makeup all the way down. That was the no pore blum primer. I think I'm going to go in with a little bit. We'll do the Becca backlight priming filter because this will give a nice glow on top of. I don't feel like the Becca one really does much for blurring out my pores, but it does give a nice glow and it does uh, make it feel a little more hydrating. So it's a nice primer. I like the sheen that it gets. You could use a liquid highlighter probably and get the same effect because this stuff's kind of pricey but I bought mine on Poshmark so I think it had been used once or twice but it's it's a pump so nothing was touched so order from Poshmark at your own risk I just need to use get down Evie no where did I put oh there it is I need the mattifying primer just because I'm going to put this on my nose. I don't know if I need to, but it's become a habit. Not really going anywhere today, so... And this probably won't stay on because I'll have other videos I'm going to try and film today too. This one's probably going to be a little bit longer than the goth one just because I'm, I feel like I'm not rushing through it quite as fast. I feel like I, I was surprised at how short that one was. I think it was, it was still like 20 minutes or something, but I was expecting it to be longer. So this is just my normal how I conceal the Pixie Brightening Concentrate, mine's in Brightening Peach. I have Hip Pan on it. This is, I've talked about this in my Get Ready's. This is an expensive um, color corrector, I feel like. I mean, it's cheaper than buying like the Becca one because the Becca one is supposed to be good. Also, it's a little more high end than that, but that one's supposed to be just as good as the Becca, but. 20, it's like $20 or $24 for that little thing. But in all fairness, I've had it, 
going on two years, so there's that. Here, I didn't put any of this around my face when I did the goth one because I was worried about not being able to cover it up, but we're gonna try it today. Okay, and then for foundation, all I did is I'm using my e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer. I have the regular um, camo concealer and I like it for cut creases. I don't like it under my eyes. I am starting to get more mature skin and it's really drying and it emphasizes the lines under my eyes, but it's good for cut crease creases. So let's go in with the foundation brush first. So I do have a light foundation. It's Maybelline. I think it's a fit me. It's a little bit older. I honestly probably just need to repurchase it. Because I'm pretty sure the two I have are expired. They are lighter. I keep them um, and then I'll go in and maybe put a little bit more under my eyes. I keep them as like mix-ins to lighten my foundation, but I honestly could probably just throw them away and just use the concealers mixed in with whatever foundation because I have an ABH one that's too dark and even my Wander Beauty one that I really like is a hair dark so the only reason I was keeping that it's like shade 115 or something like that it's really really light 112 it's like too like it's not even Jeffree Star shade it, he and he's pretty fair girls Dogs always feel like they need to. Okay, I think I got them settled down. We'll see. So I'm gonna go in with just a tad more. And I need to bring that down my neck a little bit. Under my eyes. So yeah, I probably could just throw the Maybelline away and just use the concealer to mix in. Especially this one, because this one doesn't like doesn't feel bad on the face. So I think you could totally get away with using this as foundation if you had a shade that actually matched you. I have a little bit, I have some staining from my eyeshadow that I wore to work, but we'll cover that up. will probably go in with a little bit of primer on my eyelids later on. We'll see. Okay. So that seems like that's going to be as good as it's going to get. I'm going to set under my eyes really quick and then I may cream contour a little bit and then do regular contour. I feel like if I don't set my eyes right now, they're going to crease really bad. I'm just using a little bit of the Kat Von D KVD pocket powder just because I it's a small one just because I have it and it works pretty good for under the eyes. I like ColourPop's loose powder but it's very finely milled and it doesn't I usually have to go in with a separate powder under my eyes and like on my nose and then I can go in on top of that because it really does blur it is a really good like blurring loose powder, but it's not, um, because it's so finely milled, it's not enough for me under my eyes. So I'm just setting a little bit in my T-zone and then I'll go in and cream contour. Okay, I went in super gray when I did the goth video. I don't know, this is just the Hoola contour stick. I'm gonna take it a little bit and then I'll try and go in with like a cooler shade on top of it. Cause this will blend out. Try a little bit on the nose. Okay. 
just want to see if this gives a little bit more dimension. And then maybe I could go in, yeah, like I said, with a super, like, maybe dusty shade on top. We'll see. Because I, I don't want this to be super warm, but I think whatever I put on top of it will help. And then I'll set this with powder, too, so that'll... That'll cancel out some of it. I'm just looking for a little bit more depth maybe than what I had in that video. We'll try this and see if this, this may not even make a difference, honestly. So we'll see how it goes. It's probably not the brush I should be using for the side of my nose. I'm gonna set that. And then I'll move on. Okay. Let's see. So for my whole face, I think I'll use the Revlon Color Stay, which is what I used in the goth video. That's a good... I have a translucent shade. They do make a, I think, a few shades, light, medium, deep, but... This was one of those I wasn't sure what the color was going to be like because I haven't used a lot of Revlon products ever. So I just went with the translucent. Okay, so I feel like you can kind of see the cream contour a little bit, but it's not like super pronounced. So we should be able to build off of that and be okay. Yeah, because obviously with goth, you don't want it to be real warm. Okay, I'm going to go in with a little bit of the e.l.f. halo powder just on top of that because I don't necessarily want it to look real matte. Just dust that all over. like the concealer's looking weird on my nose, but that's all right. We're past the point of no return with that. Okay, and then just my skin finish from Makeup Revolution and Opal Essence. This gives a nice sheen. I've looked up pictures. I mean, the pastel goth traditionally I think is matte, but this is, if I were, again, if I was gonna do it, how mine would look anyway, so. There's really no rules in makeup. People think that there are, but there's really not. It's whatever you wanna wear and whatever you're comfortable in. If people don't like it, they don't have to look at you. Okay, let's go into the contour drawer. Last time I used the Shade and Light palette with this shade. So maybe we'll try and go in with that because it's a pretty cool toned color compared to what I normally use. So let's see how that looks. That looks pretty warm. I do have a gray in here that I used with it. So we'll put some of the gray on top. I'm gonna go in with this. I was trying to see if I could get away with not using that loose gray powder, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to, so. Apocalyptic Beauty. This is from one of their look of the months. This is out of the mist and it is a contour, but it's like a straight gray powder. I stopped getting those look of the month bags. Um, I just didn't find myself using them a whole lot. Like I don't use the products a whole lot. And then It's a lot of loose eyeshadow. And the thing that kind of upset me was like the products in the look of the month don't come with a sifter. And I'm pretty sure when you order stuff off of the website, like directly, like I think they come with sifters. So I don't like that, like the stuff in the, and I could be wrong, but one of the blush, I have a blush in Succubus from them and it has a sifter in it. 
So that's why I came to that conclusion. I could be wrong. Let me know if you've ordered stuff from Apocalyptic Beauty. Does it come with a sifter? Because that was part of the reason. Because I'm like, why are you going to chintz on the look of the month bags? Because these products really need sifters. That kind of cooled that down a little bit. So it's an actual, like, gray contour. So... I think we'll be good with that. I am going to go back into the shade and light palette in that color just to define my cupid's bow a little bit and then we should be good. So that's a cooler tone shade. It's just my cupid's bow is not super pronounced so contouring gives the illusion that it is without me having to do like lip fillers or anything like that. So then it looks more pronounced. Okay. We can do highlighter and blush. For blush, I've got some KVD blushes. Which one did I use? I think. I think I used Rosebud in the goth video. So let's do, I think I can get away with a little bit pinkier of a tone. So we'll use Peony. I have three. And then for highlight, I don't know. I didn't pick a highlighter out. Maybe since we're a little bit lighter, let's go into the ABH Moonchild, and I will use Pink Heart. Okay, let's find a brush. These are pretty light highlighters. Oh. I do have the KVD palette. I got it on sale. And then I gotta go in and do eyebrows, but I'll do eyebrows off camera again just because it's Eyebrows are hard to do on camera. They really are, and I can't talk a whole lot, so we'll finish up the face. And then I'll do do my eyebrows, and I'll spare you the, the boringness. It's a really light shade. Let me see. Here. Um, yeah, here's the alchemy palette from Kat Von D. And she's got a pink opal. Let's see. I think that amped it up a little bit. Yeah, this one's a little bit <clears throat> brighter. That's good to know because I was thinking about decluttering one of these because I don't necessarily need both. The Kat Von D one, while it has less shades, Definitely with that color shows up more. So that that's good to know moving forward. Yeah, the ABH one has more shades in it, but that was definitely showed up better, showed up more. Okay, so we'll go in with a little bit of peony. I really like these. These are really good. Not necessarily gonna put it on front of my cheeks like I would normally. We'll wear it a little bit farther back here, kind of on top of the contour. There's probably going to be people screaming that I have too much color on my face, but you know, what are you going to do? Okay. So let's go in a little bit of spray. I'm just gonna use my watermelon from Glow Recipe, just to kind of get rid of the powdery look. Okay, so I am gonna do brows off camera and we'll I don't think they match perfectly. Like this one's definitely got a little higher of a point, but we'll just leave it. Um, I did use like a dark brown again. I didn't use a black. It looks blackish, so. Yeah, they're close, but 
this one's got a little bit higher of a point. I can't ever seem, especially doing this shape, it's really hard to get them to match. I'm just going in with my MAC Paint Pot, which is what I always use to prime. This is my favorite. It is pricey. It's 20 bucks. I got mine through Ulta. I think it's worth it. And it's lasted me a lot. I've had it for a while and I'm like barely making a dip in it. So it a little bit goes a long way. And this is a big container. So I think it's one of those that it does last you a long time. Okay, so for palettes this time, I'm going to mix my smoke. I'm going to use a smoke palette from Huda Beauty. And I'm also going to use um, the mauve obsession a little bit I think okay I did get a question because I tried out the um, rose gold palette for the first time what my most used palette is and it's the smoke palette like you can see it's grimy and my favorites are the mauve and then the emerald obsession but the smoke is probably my most used so I'm going to go in with the mid gray that's in here we're gonna put that in the crease first and then I'll go in with a mauve shade on top of it I think I'm probably just gonna use this shade and the black from the smoke palette and then I'll use the mauve palette for the rest just because I didn't want it to be like the same for one I didn't want it to be the same eye look from the last video just the gray with the pop of pink um, I wanted it to look a little bit different and I wanted to incorporate a little bit more color into the eyes than I did before. So this is just the mauve, mid-tone mauve shade. It's got a very taupey undertone to it so it works with this, I feel like. Yeah, I didn't want it to be, I didn't want to do the same eye look. I feel like I could have probably gotten away with doing the same look. Kind of transfer it over, but that would have been boring. Okay, I don't think I'll spend too much. The eye look, excuse me, it was pretty quick in that video too, I was surprised. Like the whole look, oh. it's just my makeup towel. My nose has been running really bad. It's been windy here and my allergies are bad anyway. I do have Kleenex, but I feel like I'm always using Kleenex or something on camera. Okay, not that using the towel is better, but. So we got a little bit of pink in there. Um, I'm going to take this like plummy shade. I may do this on the outer corner. And do a little bit of the black to kind of deepen this up. I'm not using a ton of shades. So this is going to be pretty. We'll go back in with the mauve color and blend this out. The pastel goth was a little bit harder of because I was trying to find, you know, clear cut. But again, like there's not going to be rules necessarily in makeup. Everybody kind of did something a little bit different depending on obviously how they wanted to wear it. So this is my best interpretation. Cleaned my brush off and I'm just gonna try and blend that black in on the outer corner. Goth is easier to find all kinds of looks and even then there's like a thousand. Just depending on how you wanna do your makeup. So that's why I just kind of went about it the way I did it, how I would wear it. Okay. So for the lid, 
There is a light pink in here. I think we'll go in with that. These shades always go on a little bit better initially with a finger, especially because I don't have a tacky base down. Usually I would go in with the NYX, the glitter glue, just because they adhere better, but gives them something to stick to. But I'm not leaving this on all day, so I didn't think that step was necessarily needed right now. Okay, and then there is a darker pink in here just to add a little bit more color. I'm going to put some of that down there. Just right there. Because I do want this to read pink. See, that's pretty. And I'm pretty sure I've worn this eye look to work. Just not with light foundation. I'm going to do a little more liner than I probably would. So for the lower lash line, let's go in with that mid-tone gray. And then I will probably take um, a pink underneath to kind of help blend it out. My eyes running. My eyes running helps if I'm doing a metallic underneath because it just makes it stick and adhere better, but not with the matte. And there's like a actual pink shade in here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the black and we're going to go in the outer corner area with that just to kind of deepen that up. Just a smidge. Try to bring that up into the top. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty easy for inner corner. I'll use one of the shades from the smoked palette. The shimmers are very soft in all of these little like palettes, so the palettes end up looking pretty mucky, but you can definitely tell that I used them. And then for under the brow, there is a cream shade in the mauve palette. So I'm gonna go on top with that. And then a tiny bit of what I used on my inner corner on top of it. And then we will go in back with that mom shade and just kind of make sure that there's not like a, a sh stark like shimmer line happening up there. Okay, so that's easy enough for that. I'm gonna grab liner and figure out a lip color. I'll try and put lashes on, grab my wig, and we'll see what the finished product is. Okay, like. here we are. You don't know how long I was gone. It took me longer than I thought. I was. I apparently only own one black lipstick. Um, I had a couple from Apocalyptic Beauty and I guess I decluttered them. So this is Sugar Pills Trick from their Halloween collection last year. It's not my favorite. You can't really, you have to build it up. It's very sheer compared to their others. Um, there is glitter in it. So once you get it built up, it's pretty. And I did go around it with my KVD anti-precision pencil just around the edges to clean the edges up. But I tried to put like a pink in the center and it doesn't really layer well with others, but I'm going to keep it because obviously it's the only black I own. I did declutter the orange one because that one, um, anytime I put my lips together, um, the top would transfer to the bottom and it was a mess. So I did declutter the orange one, but hopefully if they come out with a new collection this year, um, it's better. I will try and get it if they do. I did put a little bit of this neon lip liner shockwave from LA Girl. I don't know what color it is. Pop. So I got a little bit of hot pink in the waterline. I did go in with this um, darker shade in the inner corner a little bit. 
I did my star stamp. Um, my eyeliner, I think, was Ella Masca. It's a pretty, like, chubby felt tip. I have lashes on. I think that's it. Yeah, my main complaint was the, um, the lipstick, but I apparently got rid of all my blacks because it's been so long. It's like, oh, I'm never going to film that, so I'm going to have to get some more, like, an actual bullet lipstick or something, but this is nice once you get to once you get it built up but yeah so here we are a little more pink than what I did in the goth video you can kind of see my blonde on that side I had to brush this wig out and it's not um I didn't pull the same amount of hair on both sides so there's that but it's pretty I think this I don't know. I like both of the looks that I did, like the makeup, um, aside from the foundation being really pale. I would honestly wear both of these looks to work. I will do a black lip occasionally. Obviously, I haven't done one in a while since I got rid of all my black lipsticks, but um, I do like this one. It's just very goopy feeling because I had to layer it up like three times to get it to be this opaque. Um, Jeffree Star makes a good black lipstick, I've heard. Not that I want to go out and purchase anything from him, but I may look and see if I can get it on Poshmark just so I have another black option and then maybe try and put a layer of this on top of it. Because it is, I do like the glitter in it. It just, the three layers, it's very thick feeling. So I don't foresee myself trying to wear that all day. But yeah, I, again, I like how the makeup turned out. I like the eyes. Um, the star stamp is from Starlux. Starlux Pro Luxie Pen Artist Edition. So it's got a felt tip on one end and the star stamper on the other. So it's very easy. You just stick that sucker right on there. I don't really like the felt side so much because I have trouble doing wings with felt liners, but I do enjoy a star stamp now and again so yeah that is the finished look let me know what you guys thought leave me some recommendations if you want me to do any more transformations i can order some more wigs these were super inexpensive on amazon i could get some more um i was gonna do a three part but i could i you know there's cyber goth which they do sell cyber goth wigs but i don't know let me know if there's another transformation video you would like me to do and I can look into getting this stuff because I would like to do a third one. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Again, make sure you're subscribed. Hopefully this wasn't too boring. I feel like this one wasn't as exciting as the goth video, but what are you going to do? Hopefully you guys stay safe and I look forward to seeing everybody in my next video. Bye everyone.